Hi everybody, it's Sally here. Uh, today, on this second video, I'm going to show you the swung variations of the English rib from the uh, Knitmaster or Silver Reed SRP60N instruction book. Uh, in the first video, we went through what all the elements of the operating table mean and how to follow the pictograms and the instructions. And so on this second one, I'm just going to go straight in and start to demonstrate the swung English rib. Um, the cast on is exactly the same as for the English rib. So I've got every alternate needle in B position. My carriage is on the right hand side here and I'm just going to set it up according to the first line of instructions on the operating table. So I've got nothing in the punch card pattern. It's set on stop. My side levers, both of them are forward. My stockinette, uh, my cam lever is set to knit stocking net on the knitter. The auxiliary yarn feeder on the river arm is at the circle. The driving lever is down. Both my tension dials I need to set to naught. Uh, set levers both on one. Pick knobs in the right place. That's in the right place. The river is obviously up in the upmost position and I'm on full pitch number five carriages connected so I just need to thread up and knit my circulars my lot has become all threaded as for the first video I'm using a three ply yarn quite a fine yarn And I'm just going to make a loop, drop it through the beds, hook on a clamp, and I'm going to push all my needles out to D. Just make sure I haven't got one missing, that they're in the right place. They're not going to bash into one another. And everything looks fine. So I will knit from right to left with no yarn in and pick the yarn up when I get over on the left hand side. The yarn is now fed. Uh, knit my zigzag way. Oops. don't think it could have been fed incorrectly. Okay, that's better. I didn't feed it in correctly. So cast on comb in. Wire in and two river weights. So next I'm going to knit my three circular rows and as on the English rib, you just need to change the tension dial on the river up to two and then set your set lever on the left to north for the first row. First row done on the knitter. Set the cam on the knitter to slip. And the second row goes across on the river and not on the knitter. And then back to stockinette on the knitter. And that's the third row done. So to proceed, I now set the cam lever on the knitter to stockinette and the right side lever to triangle so that it patterns in one direction only i.e. tucks in one direction only. Both tension dials go back up to four and then over here, you've never done this before, 
this is giving you the indicator for the uh, position of the racking handle. So we started off on five. I'm going to knit two rows back and forth, as it says there, then change it to seven and knit two rows. And then as that's all that's in the second part of my operator table, I just repeat those two steps. It's important with these patterns to set your row counter to help you keep track, especially once some of the racking patterns get complicated. Remember where you're going. So on rows one to two, it's five, three to four, it's seven, five to six will be five, seven to eight, it'll be seven, nine to ten, it's five, eleven and twelve, it's seven. So if you if it helps you to remember, you could write all that down on a bit of paper. If the phone rings, somebody comes to the door, or the dog's sick on the carpet, or any of the other kind of random things that interrupt your knitting, you can remember where you are on the row counter. So. Rack your handle on five, knit two rows. Rat. I forgot to set my set lever down, never mind. Let's start the game. Racking handle to five. Knit two rows. Then you just rack by turning the handle till the P indicator indicates seven. You can see that maybe under there. Just about, it's a bit dark. And it just means that the whole position of the riverbed has moved two places to the left and you can see that because these stitches on here now have diagonal slopes to them. So knit two rows and then twist it back to five and again you can see the slope. Seven. And again, at a certain point, it's a good idea to put your edge weights on. And I can tell by the position of the stitches here that I haven't yet racked. Rack to seven. Back to five. And that's all there is to it. Um, you could do some experimentation of your own and uh, see what you think uh, by changing the racking to every four rows or every eight rows uh, just to, to experiment and see what comes out. I'm just going to stick this back on normal ribbing for a moment. And knit a few rows because I then want to move on to doing the checkerboard pattern on the other on the other page. All right, so uh, this is the variation of the English rib that produces this really nice checkerboard effect. Where's it gone? looks like that. Uh, the one we've I've just done should come out like that. Now the start of it is exactly the same as the one I've just done so I'm not going to take the knitting off and start all over again. I'm going to pick it up at the point at which I have done my three circular rows here as if. So the 
thing that produces the pattern on this one, and it did take me a little while to get my head round what to do about this, is there's a needle arrangement on the ribber. And when you look at it quickly, it might not be immediately obvious that there is a needle arrangement on the ribber, but there is. So looking very carefully at the where the needles are on the knitter, the needle immediately to the left of naught should be a knitter needle in work, and it is. And then if you look underneath it, we've shifted the bed to H pitch. So slide the lever from P to H and the river gets shunted to one side by half a notch. And then opposite that needle now, I need to have two needle space rather than a half a space. So I need to get my river transfer tool and transfer the stitches to make that pattern. So I've got a space of two needles, then one in work, a space, one in work, a space, one in work, a space. And I just need to transfer the needles using my transfer tool to make sure that I'm getting that pattern correctly. might mean you've got to shift four along by one space so I'm moving them along I hope you can see what I'm doing right there so there's my space of two now one in work and I've got to shunt these along So I've now got the two spaces, one space, one space, one space, one, and now I've got a needle with a stitch on it that I don't want anymore. I'm coming up to another two needle space. So all I did here was I transferred this one to its neighbour. Now I've got two needle space, one in work space, one in work space, one in work space, one in work, and a space. So that's my next four in work. So this set here, I need to move along one again. Until I've got a group of four in the right place. And then that one goes on to its neighbour. So on that side from naught, I've got my two needles out of work. Four alternate ones in. Two out, four turn up ones in, two out, four turn up ones in, two out, and four turn up ones in. And I need to make sure I've got the same on this side. So I've got four turn up ones in, and I need a space of two. So that one has to go to its neighbour. That one goes to its neighbour. And to its neighbour that one to its neighbour and then that one there, that extra one, I don't want as a working stitch anymore so I transfer it onto the same needle as that last one there. And I've got space of two, one, two, three, four and these ones I need to move over one again giving me that two needle space there. So it's a little bit fiddly, get it right. There we go. So just double check again, two needles out of work, one space, one space, one space, one, two out, one space, one space, one, two out, one space, one space, one space, one, two out, one space, one space, one space, one. Same on this side. And I'm on eight on half pitch now. And now I've got my needle arrangement in. I set up the carriage exactly the same way as I did for the previous two types of rib. So, cam lever on the knitter goes to tuck, and the right side lever goes back to triangle. And I'm on H pitch. And what I have to do here is I'm going to reset my row counter back to naught. 
and I do two rows on H5, two rows on H6 for a total of 16 rows and that's what that instruction there means. And then I'll be doing two rows on H7 and two rows on H6 for a total of 16 rows. So I'm on H5, so I'm going to knit, oh, I'm going to move my side weights up first. This was the one when I experimented with it the other day. Oh, I had a bit of trouble with the edge stitches dropping off, so make sure they're on. So H5, knit two rows. Rack to H6, knit two rows. Back to H5, knit two rows. six two rows and so I've done 16 rows alternating the swing between h5 and h6 move the edge weights up okay. and then on this one I'm going to swing it the other way so go to seven and then six so go to h7 two rows it helps reset the row counter so you know that you're always working in blocks of 16. Six. Seven. Six. Seven. And six. And that's the second set of pattern repeats completed for the uh, checkerboard pattern. So I'm trying to fiddle this head wage up. I'm just going to move that out of the way a minute. Put it back. So I'll do another set of repeats just so you can see set it back to naught uh, rack to five two rows six five six five six five six reset row counter Seven, two, six, seven, two the edge weights again, just in case. Now I can tell from the position of my stitches that I haven't wrapped yet. So back to six. go that's how to do the checkerboard pattern all down to the needle arrangement there let's take the weights off take the edge weights off first the other weights off and break the yarn And I set my knitter counter stock in it. And pull it off the machine. Take the uh, wire out and remove the comb. 
No, I didn't do my ravel cord on this one. The edge might be a bit frilly. Let's uh, put a pillowcase over there to stop myself getting covered in even more grease. Um, and there you can see them. So there's the first one I did, the, the basic swing. And look at that nice effect you get there by going back to ordinary rib. Like a nice little kiddies um, matin. Do kids wear matiny coats these days, babies, I mean? Whatever. Uh, and so it draws that in, whereas that is much wider. And there's the checkerboard pattern. That is so effective. And if you had a pretty yarn, um, it would make, a, I think, a nice baby blanket, nice scarves. Because the advantage of these ones is that they lie flat. And you don't get that rib, uh, that edge curl that you get on stockinette. So with the rib stitches, you get a nice flat fabric. And they're really not that difficult. I think the idea is a lot more intimidating than the actual performance of the ribs on the machine. And I'm as guilty as the next person of thinking that my rib is only necessary for cuffs and welts and things like that. But uh, I'm, uh, I'm feeling quite inspired by some of these things. They look really rather nice. Well, I hope you found that useful. I'm, I'm going to go and investigate because um, it doesn't tell me in the instruction book how to do full fisherman's rib where you're tucking on the knitter bed and the river bed. It's obviously got something to do with the, um, the picking lever at the bottom, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, so I'll have to go and check it. But uh, uh, in the meantime, I, I hope you like these ideas. Um, they will work on any gauge of river. I don't see any reason why that won't work on the SR155 as well. Um, I actually did get my chunky river out from under the bed today, but this sponge bore is shot, so I've had to send for a new one. So I won't be demonstrating or trying them out on my chunky for a few days yet, but um, I see no reason why they wouldn't work, or if you're lucky enough to have the, the mid-gauge electronic machine, um, you have this, you know, be able to do it on there as well. Lovely. Thank you.